Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of several Tudor history books. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Mary I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 5th of March, 1558, Spanish physician Francisco Fernandez brought back live tobacco plants and seeds from Mexico to Europe. Fernandez had been sent to Mexico by King Philip II of Spain to investigate the country's produce. In 1492, people had been seen by members of Columbus's crew carrying some kind of lighted firebrand and perfuming themselves with herbs in Cuba. Then, in the mid-1490s, snuff-taking had been observed, and in 1502, the chewing of tobacco had been seen in South America. All this had aroused curiosity in the Spanish voyagers. The chewing and smoking of tobacco was enjoyed by both the native population and the Spanish visitors in South America, and also what is now Texas in the 1540s. But the tobacco plant was not known in Europe until Fernandez took it back with him in 1558, although some sources suggest that it arrived in France two years earlier. But what about England? When did tobacco arrive in England? Well, contemporary chronicler John Stowe writes of explorer Sir John Hawkins and his crew bringing tobacco to England in 1565, although he states that it was not used by Englishmen in many years after. Hawkins and his crew would have known about smoking tobacco using a pipe and may have done it themselves, but it's another Elizabethan explorer who is famous for making it fashionable in England. Sir Walter Raleigh or Raleigh. It is claimed that Sir Rafe Lane, who was given the task of establishing a colony at Roanoke in North Carolina by Raleigh, gave Raleigh an Indian tobacco smoking pipe and showed him how to use it in 1586 when they arrived back in England. However, George Latimer Apperson, in his The Social History of Smoking, points out that Raleigh would already have known the Indian practice from his captains Amadus and Barlow, who brought him back Native Americans in 1584 who smoked, and also from Thomas Harriet, who Raleigh sent out to investigate Virginia's natural produce. In Harriet's report, he wrote of the tobacco plant and how it was sucked through clay pipes into the stomach and head. Harriet wrote of how it purgeth superfluous phlegm and other gross humours, openeth all the pores and passages of the body. And he also wrote that it preserved the body from obstructions and that the smokers' bodies were notably preserved in health and know not many grievous diseases, wherewithal we in England are oftentimes afflicted. He then went on to report his own experiences of smoking it, and Apperson believes that it's highly probable that he encouraged his patron Raleigh to try it. Harriet is not alone in believing tobacco to be good for one's health. Spanish physician and botanist Nicolas Manades wrote of how Spaniards in the New World were taught the medicinal virtues of the tobacco plant by the natives, and in his 1569 book he wrote of these virtues. He believed that it was a cure-all, that it doth marvellous works without any need of other surgery, and that it could cure over 20 conditions, including the common cold and cancer. Menardo's work was translated into English in 1577 by John Frampton. In 1595, Tobacco, a work by poet and pamphleteer Anthony Shute, lauded the health benefits of tobacco. He wrote, I think that there is nothing that harms a man inwardly from his girdle upward, but may be taken away with the moderate use of tobacco. In 1600, according to legend, Sir Walter Raleigh presented Queen Elizabeth I with a pipe and persuaded her to try smoking. It made her sick and she believed she'd been poisoned. However, it still caught on and became fashionable at court. It's easy to see how it became popular when it was smoked by royal favourites like Sir Walter Raleigh and said to have such wonderful health benefits. 
It was used at the time by smoking it, snuffing it, or by applying it topically. Playwright and poet Christopher Marlowe was interested in it, and in Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen, Belphoebe gives Timius tobacco to cure his wound. As tobacco smoking became more and more popular, some people became concerned about its adverse effects. In 1602, an anonymous English doctor using the name Philaretes published an anti-tobacco treatise, work for chimney sweepers or a warning for tobacconists, the first publication to present the health risks of tobacco. In it, the author pointed out that seeing as the illnesses seen in chimney sweepers were caused by soot, that tobacco could have similar effects. In 1604, King James I imposed a tax on tobacco and wrote his treatise, A Counterblast to Tobacco, in which he described smoking tobacco as a custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs, and in the black stinking fume thereof, nearest resembling the horrible stygian smoke of the pit that is bottomless. He also argued that it did not balance the humours, with its smoke being humid, that the smoke turned liquid in a person's nose, making medical conditions like the rooms worse rather than better, and that it would lead to the English people's destruction, and that it was just a panacea. The Puritans also argued against it, seeing it as something that corrupted the body. Its addictive nature had also been noted, with Francis Bacon noting its rise and how difficult it was to break the habit of smoking it. Interestingly, in 1615 or 1616, Thomas Harriet, who'd reported the positive effects of smoking tobacco to Sir Walter Raleigh, suffered from a cancerous ulcer on his lip, and his death in 1621 is thought to have been caused by cancer from his use of tobacco. So something that was introduced into Europe on this day in Tudor history, the 5th of March, 1558, went from being seen as a fashionable cure-all to being a health concern within 50 years. And now a little trivia. While tobacco was seen as a cure-all, potatoes and tomatoes, as members of the nightshade family, were viewed with suspicion on their introduction to Europe. Herbalist John Gerard believed tomatoes to be poisonous, and Europeans believed that potatoes caused ailments such as leprosy and scrofula. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 5th of March 1549, a bill of attainder was passed against Thomas Seymour, Baron Sudley, uncle of King Edward VI, finding him guilty of 33 counts of treason. And you can find out more in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking just about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like and leave a comment. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye bye.